Hello, Slush. Um, really excited to talk to you today. And I'd like you to join me by thinking back to the start of your day. After you woke up, uh, maybe you woke up in a hotel and thought, where am I? That typically happens to me somewhere, somewhere new. Um, and you realize you're in Helsinki, and maybe you actually realize you got a bit of a hangover after the night before. Um, then what products did you use as part of your morning routine? If, like me, you jumped out of bed, got in the shower, used some shampoo, some conditioner, some shower gel, uh, got out, dried yourself off, and then maybe, if you're like me, approaching 40, you're now reaching for the age-defying daily moisturizer as well. You put that on. Um, and then you get to the finishing touches. And you might put on some hairspray, some hair gel, maybe some makeup. And then you're all smelling great, so I know that you've put on some perfume and some aftershave as well. Well, before you've even eaten anything, you have used many, many different products in the day. And on the back of the pack, there are hundreds of different ingredients in these products. And that's before we've even got into our full daily routine. And it's great that humans are thriving, but sourcing these ingredients is leading to the destruction of our planet. But it's good news, because solutions are within our reach. And one of those solutions is an application of engineering biology, where everyday ingredients, such as palm oil, can be made more sustainably. Tiny living microbes are reprogrammed to convert waste food streams into useful ingredients that typically come from industrial farming or fossil fuels. Sounds great. Let's do it. If only it were that simple. I'd like you to imagine that you're in a huge maze and you're trying to find your way out. This is what it feels like when you're trying to engineer biology. Ahead of you are many different pathways that you can take. And it's difficult to know which is the best route to go down. And typically, you aren't armed with much more than your opinion when deciding which way to go. And unfortunately, this is the reality of engineering biology and in industry today. We've got some really clever scientists, and they're trying to find a pathway to re-engineer some microbes to get to an end product. And they're basing those decisions on their experiences, on their ideas. There's a load of inherent bias, and they're not testing enough. And it's akin to playing the lottery. We're basically gambling with funds, hoping that we make it. Sometimes we do, but it's difficult to replicate. But there's good news, because we are on the cusp of a biorevolution. Advances in wet lab testing, robotics, automation means that scientists can test hundreds of thousands of different micro variations at the same time. And as well as a bio revolution, we're also experiencing an AI revolution with new tools and techniques that can provide next level insights. But you might be thinking, well, you've been doing science for a while as industry. Surely there's a load of data that we can leverage. But sadly, it has not been collected with AI in mind. We might have a lot of data, but our new tools are struggling to provide the next level insights that we need. But there is a great new company called Twig uh, who is here to revolutionize how we do that. So at Twig, we combine rapid testing in our wet labs using our robotics to generate really large data sets that feeds into our machine learning models, telling us what to test and where to go next. It means we're not led by scientific opinion, not the ego of one scientist or the wisdom of a crowd, but by our machine learning models that make connections across the complex landscape of biology. And at the heart of our discovery is our twig tree. We could copy industry, like at the top, and play the lottery and try and find a pathway that we can connect together to get to that end product. But instead, at Twig, we follow a collection of reactions. We build data using our process in a systematic way that we can layer on top, build knowledge around these reactions, and unlock multiple products. It's a different way of thinking about engineering biology. So what's the result? Well, in a few years, the tires on your car will be made with rubber from microbes rather than from fossil fuels. 
if you start reaching for that age-defying moisturizer, or maybe you're already using it, the vitamins in the moisturizer will be made with microbes rather than from industrial farming. And just as good as all of that new technology, we can also bring supply chain security because our ingredients can be made anywhere in the world. All we need is a large steel tank called a bioreactor, a bit bigger than this, but you can picture it. And in that, we put our microbes, water, the nutrients we need, some energy to keep it warm and to get the ingredients making, making what we want. So nations and companies can have the ingredients that they need on their doorstep. So I'll leave you with this. I'd like you to think back to that morning routine. What product do you absolutely love that you wish that was just a bit more sustainable? Or the twig way of thinking about it, what ingredient do we need to start making with microbes? If you're excited about combining AI, robotics, and biology all together, then please do follow us, because we'll have lots more to share in the months and years ahead. Thanks very much for listening.